Today we are going to look at the topic of automatic login to a website. For this we will log into our own Facebook account. In this video you will learn everything you need to know. In the first step we will create a small layout with a few text boxes and a login button. For a better look we will use a Nugent package which gives us a metro style look. If you are interested, check out my extra video about it. I'll link it for you in the description. I'll also put my other web automation videos in the description. Here you will learn all the basics and more. So make sure you don't miss them. After we have installed the Nugent package, we can change the style of our form with a simple change. Furthermore, we now have customized new controls such as buttons, text boxes and much more. So let's quickly create a nice layout for our program. Now we need two more Nugent packages to be able to interact with the website. I have explained this in further steps for the first installation and more in an extra video. Have a look at the description or on my channel and you will surely find what you are looking for. We will use the variable of type Chrome driver to load the website and interact with it. First, we will create a separate method for the entire necessary initialization of the driver and start it asynchronously so that the user interface does not freeze. We also use a bool as return value. This we will use to see if the loading process from the website is finished. At this point we can start to automate the website.
In the Chrome options we can set several different values, like max or hide the browser window. For this example we just set a basic command for the window. We also can set the binary location from our Chrome file that we use in this example. In the next step we also have to set the path for our Chrome driver. I out both links for the files in the description. It's also possible to use your already installed Chrome browser for automation, but then you have also used the right version for your Chrome driver and keep track of any update from Chrome. If you are interested how to do that, just let me know in the comments and I will create a separate video to show that. Now we can put everything together to create our browser. We use our new Metro Cytle Control Process Spinner as a loading trigger. Now we can see when the tool is working and also when it's finished. Just add some more lines of code to hide the command window from our Chrome driver. Before we start our first test, let us implement something that closes our Chrome driver at any tool close. The easiest way is the form closing event from our form. There we can use the process class to check if any Chrome driver process is already running and kill it. Now we can add the right website address to our text box and start our first test, to open Facebook. Hmm may be also good to write another line of code that handles the cockies. But then we are ready.
looks good, we see our loading spinner and Facebook is loading. But there is a pop-up that hides our view. Let us fix that for our automation tool. We can make a right click with our mouse at any place of the website and use inspect in the context menu to go to the Chrome Dev Tools. Also possible with F12. There we can find the needed identifier for our button, that our tool must click automatic. If we have the needed ID, we can go back to our code and implement the needed changes. Now we use a simple if statement to check if the browser is already on the Facebook site. For this we use the browser title. At this place we get the pop-up button using the ID that we found. If we get the button we can click it by code and pop-up is gone, that is the theory, let's try. Until the site is not reached we use in the else statement a goto command to start the loop again. To prevent endless loops, you can also set a may loop time. I explain that in other video on my channel. I put all related videos in the video description for you. If the pop-up click is successfully we also set our bool to true. So let's try again to load the site without pop-up. Looks like our button identifier is not found. This happens occasionally. But there are various possibilities for a suitable identifier. In this case we try this path as identifier. To do this, simply select the appropriate area with the right mouse button. Then we insert it into our code and try again. Very good. The first step seems to be working. Now we can take care of the logon process. For this we first get the corresponding identifiers for the email and the password field, and for the login button. There we have to change the result check. That we go into the if section when the result is true. That is happen if the website is loaded complete and pop-up is gone. This position will be the best place for our login magic. So we get all the website controls with the identifier that we found and use them to send the data to it. Last step is to click the login button on the website.
Let's make our final test. Looks fine. Facebook is loading. Pop-up is gone. And the login is also successfully. So you see how easy it is to control any website. With this basic information you can do many cool things in the world of automation. But of course there is many more to learn in the topic control the web using C Sharp and Selenium. Don't miss any further content on this channel, or let me know your next wish. I am happy to guide you through this journey and share my knowledge with you.